Hi, welcome to Spotlight on Success. Today I have a special, special surprise for you. We have Daffy Maxwell Reed with us. We all know her as Viv from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and we're gonna have a good time. She's gonna share some information about success, her career, her life, her things she's doing right now and I'm excited to be a part of it. So check out Spotlight on Success and we're here of course with the amazing Derek Wright of Full Motion Media. Check him out as well and enjoy. Thank you. Three, two, one. Okay, welcome to Spotlight on Success. Thank I you. I am so glad to have you with me today. I'm excited. You're kind, you're wonderful. And Miss Daffy Maxi Maxwell Reed, I am so honored that you are here with me today. You are a accomplished woman, established woman. I've learned that recently you're a designer on top of an actor, photographer. You have an array of things that you're doing. So the first thing I want you to do, I want you to tell the people on Spotlight on Success who you say you are. I am the daughter of Green and Rosalie Maxwell. Okay. That's, that's who I honor in all the things that I do, oh. my parents. Okay. And I'm the mother of Christopher Tubbs, and he's my joy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the grandmother to his son, Kai. Mm. And I also have other children by my husband okay. and his first wife. Okay. I call them my kids anyway. Yes, though. yes. And I'm just a happy woman who's mm -hmm. lived a life of joy with lots of blessings that God gave me at birth. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, my first vivid um, memory of you, of course, is Aunt Viv on the Fresh Prince of Galea. <laughs> you Love missed it. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to tell that age. I'm a little younger, but I'm getting up there. Well, that's 20 years into my career oh on television, so oh <laughs> I started in television in about 1979. Oh so. my goodness. Okay. Uh, I was eight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so were my kids. Oh my <laughs> oh my so, okay. okay, well, yeah, I, I loved you on that, but I know you've done a lot of things since then. You've done so many television shows. You have a designer line now, clothing line, that I got a chance to see some of the pieces. Um, wonderful. I want you to tell me and tell the people on Spotlight on Success, how do you keep a balance and be you with the accomplished woman that you are? Being you is waking up in the morning and putting your feet on the floor. That's wow. being you. I love it. Uh, I just do what I have to do when I have to do it. Okay. And you have to measure your time and value your time according to what you want to accomplish. That's a great thing. And if you have a plan, mm -hmm. and you have the steps to that plan, mm -hmm. you take it step by step, and everything gets done when okay. you take it step by step. Okay. Now, do you write down everything that you have to do for the day, or is it you just play it by ear, and sometimes it switches up on you, but you just breathe through it? I usually have a plan for the week oh, wow. to accomplish certain tasks okay. during the week, because okay. it's everything is interrupted by meetings and yes. and life yes. so I have a plan for a week I okay. usually during the day I will plan starting in the morning mm -hmm. whether I'm going to work out or not work out whether it's one of those days mm -hmm. and after that whether I travel or don't travel mm -hmm. and if I'm home for the whole day then I do have things that I need to get done I'm a, a wife mm -hmm. as well so yes there's laundry and grocery shopping and dishes and all sorts of things like that but I also do a lot of my computer work okay. when I have time at home okay now we forget things like that when we see um, such a successful person as yourself we forget the regular life and that's one of the things we forget that you have a regular life outside of everything that we see you do what so. you see me do is my work. Okay. Yes. And my work is not who I am. Oh. My work is what I do. I'm glad to hear you say that. I'm <laughs> and you I'm, that. you'll see me in the grocery store, you'll see me in the cleaners. Oh. I say hi. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, well, one of the things I want to know from you, and I've been um, just curious about to know, what do you feel about becoming successful and walking in purpose? Because you know Spotlight on Success is about giving inspiration to those who feel like that they may not have a purpose. They don't have a clue about how to go about being successful. Because to be successful, we all know it takes money to make money. What about those people who don't have the money and don't know how to 
take the first step into walking into purpose or even, even thinking about being successful? First, you have to understand what you like to do, mm -hmm. what your skills are, what mm -hmm. your talents are. Sit and ponder what that is, mm -hmm. and then figure out what you want to do with it, how to monetize mm -hmm. that talent. Mm -hmm. Success is being able to monetize what you love to do. Wow. That's success. Wow. And you can only be successful if you're joyful in your success. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're on to the next thing and your success means nothing. Mm -hmm. It means that, yeah, I've accomplished something, but I haven't had my success because I'm driven to do this. Wow. I am driven to live my life with the purpose that is at hand at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't have a singular purpose mm -hmm. except joy mm -hmm. and not stepping on anybody's toes. Mm -hmm. I, I like to live a life of humility mm -hmm. and a life of helping somebody be inspired about something. Mm -hmm. Even if it's somebody I see on the street who starts talking to me mm -hmm. and asks me about something that I try to point them to look for the joy that they want in their life mm -hmm. and go to pursue that joy. And when you pursue that joy, your purpose is revealed and you accomplish what you set out to accomplish. Oh, I love that. I love that. This is great information. And I can see that you're a person that stands by your word and means what you say. You have, I've reached out to you, I think the first time, maybe summer before last. And your first thing was to, what can I do to help you? Mm -hmm. And I love it. And my spirit for you, one, at that moment, just fell in love with you. Well, thank you. Yes, you're a beautiful person. Thank beautiful you. Beautiful person. And I also want to know, how does it feel being the first of so, several endeavors as a black African-American woman? You were the first to grace Glamour magazine. So I see you have some modeling in your history. You was the first um, in your college. I believe to be named homecoming queen. Mm -hmm. So you've broken some barriers along the way and you're still sitting here with grace and elegance and looking beautiful. How do you stay humble and how do you even, I mean, I know it has, it's God. I know it's God, but you've done so many things and yet what is the advice that you can give about breaking barriers and just taking that leap because you've done it? My breaking barriers had nothing to do with anything I did. Okay. I was in the right place at the time when change was happening. Okay. I was a part of change. Okay. And if you live your life, you may become part of change. Mm -hmm. You don't aim to become part of change, right. but you live your life according to your truths and your, your integrity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes change happens that affect more people than just yourself. Okay. And in my case, it was timing. It was the late 60s, things mm -hmm. were happening, and I was in the right place to affect that change without me doing anything but being who I was. Okay. I accepted the opportunities as they arose, and I gave it my best. And by doing that, I affected change. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't try to make a change. Mm -hmm. I just took my next step on my journey, mm -hmm. and change happened. Mm -hmm. Life is change. Mm -hmm. So no matter what step you take, you're going to change something. Oh, wow. Sometimes the changes are big and historic, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're little incremental changes that add up to something big and historic. Mm -hmm. But everything one does mm -hmm. affects something right. in their life or someone else's life. Right. I love it. I love it. I'm hearing you talk about the joy of a purpose, and I'm hearing you talk about um, seeking out for that joy and just being a better influence for other people. I also wanted to um, commend you on, um, like I say, your clothing line. I understand you do some photography. You, you're just a well-versed woman all together. So what are you working on these days and what can we look to expect and look forward to when it comes to caffeine read? This is not my first fashion line. Okay. Uh, in the 90s, I created uh, a sewing kit with okay. McCall Pattern Company called Suddenly You're Sewing with uh -huh. Daphne Maxwell Reed. Okay. And it was a project that I created mm -hmm. and took to McCall's patterns mm -hmm. and they got on board with me mm -hmm. and assisted in getting these packages made that we sold on QVC. Okay. 
we sold 150,000 units of these tapes wow. and patterns. Wow. And then I was given a signature line at McCall's Patterns. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of one of the um, public displays mm -hmm. of my designer talent. Okay. I did not take that into a custom business. Mm -hmm. I've sewn for myself since I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. So I've always made my clothes, mostly because I'm a fabriholic, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I cannot find in a store colors that suit me or fit that suits me or a shape that suits me mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't bother to look. <laughs> I just make it. And I've been doing that all my life. And my husband mm -hmm. encouraged me mm -hmm. to finally put out for consumption a style of Chinese jacket that I have been wearing for the past few years that I've always gotten compliments on. Okay. And people would see me in this jacket, and I had probably eight or ten of them in different colors, mm -hmm. and say, oh, that's beautiful. Where can I get one of them? I said, well, <laughs> I make them. Mm -hmm. But I never said I'd make one for you. <laughs> Because I didn't want to get tied to my sewing machine yes. because yes. I've been doing photography for the past eight years uh -huh. and exploring, working with photographs and um, gallery shows and writing books mm -hmm. and doing all that wonderful stuff that I've, I've learned how to publish. I've learned a lot of things on the photographic journey and I wasn't really ready to sit myself in the chair uh -huh. and start making stuff. Yes. Yes. And I realize that I can do both and I can have a limited mm -hmm. custom mm -hmm. tailoring business mm -hmm. and I will only make these coats mm -hmm. and I will only make them for people who can afford them right. and for people that I think will look good in them. Mm. If you don't, if you're not going to look good in the coat, I'm not going to make it for oh, you. Wow. <laughs> it's not your style yes. and there's okay. no point in me trying to make it try to be your style. Yes. 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 So I'm being very selective. Mm -hmm. I've been very blessed. Mm -hmm. I've gotten orders mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it until I get tired of doing it. And then I'm going to do something else. Okay. Okay. And will you maintain um, doing acting as well? I always am open to acting. Okay. And for those who want to be actors and actresses, yes. Yes. it's a uh -huh. business in which you are chosen. You don't get to say, I'm going to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. have to wait until a job selects you. Mm -hmm. You have no control over that part of your life. Mm -hmm. All you can do is do the best job you can when you are chosen. Mm -hmm. I don't sit around and wait to be chosen. Mm -hmm. And I want a little more control of what my time is going to be. So when I'm not selected to be an actress, I fill my time with things that I really enjoy doing. That's wonderful. That's one, and that's a great tidbit for everybody to know that if you're not chosen, fill yourself with other things that bring you joy. Because we are diversified people, and God be that give us more than one gift. Yes, and if you want to be in the film or television business, mm -hmm. behind the camera there are hundreds of jobs that are extremely fulfilling, mm -hmm. and far more employed mm -hmm. <laughs> than a specific actor or actress mm -hmm. is. Okay. So I always encourage people to look behind the camera mm -hmm. for jobs there too because there's so many and they can be just as creative and fulfilling, mm -hmm. not be on the screen. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Okay, that's wonderful. Now we're going to wrap up. I'm not going to hold you much longer, but you've given us some excellent, excellent information some advice that we just can't get anywhere. And people need to know this. Now, I want to ask for those who are dying to be actors, because you know there are plenty that will be looking at this that mm -hmm. want to know, what is that life like? Is it something that you encourage people towards or you don't have a preference? Or what is it like being Miss Daphne Reed and being all that you are? I live a busy life. Mm -hmm. I live a fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. I don't encourage or discourage anybody on their chosen path. Okay, right. I just suggest that young people who want to go into the field also find something with which they can earn their grocery money mm -hmm. because they're going to be waiting yes. to be called. Yes. 
and if they want to have a life that they have control over things, mm -hmm. acting is not it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> acting is something that happens to you and with you, mm -hmm. but not because of you. Mm -hmm. You can be very, very talented and never be chosen. Mm -hmm. And that's because somebody else's point of view mm -hmm. is involved yes. in whether you work or not. Yes. And hey, I don't want to live totally like that. That's right, that's right, smart way to live. And my last question to you, if you have to give a testimony or something that you wanted to give people on Spotlight on Success, what would be your testimony or what is it that you would like to give back to this audience? Um, there are people that are hungry, there are people that are seeking for this knowledge, people that life will be changed just because of today hearing you say, listen, seek that joy, listen, make a change, be impactful. All of that has even changed me today listening to you. I love it. So what, what would you want to say before we end this interview on Spotlights on Success? Because everything you've given me is, has been blessing. And I'm sure the people on Spotlight on Success feel the same way. What I can say to anyone mm -hmm. is, if you fall down, get up. <laughs> get up. Keep going. Yes. Your life is the next step. Mm -hmm. Your life is a journey. It's not a destination. Uh -huh. You have to live the journey. Mm -hmm. Even when you go down in the valley, mm -hmm. there's a lesson to be learned there. Learn it and keep climbing. Don't stop. Because mm -hmm. when you stop, they yes. start throwing dirt on your face. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Miss Daphne Reed, what else can I say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you for inviting me. woman. I love you. I mean that from the bottom <laughs> of my heart. Um, I'm not going to say I'm not going to worry you some more just to say hi. How you doing? But Fine. You have done a wonderful thing here today for not just me, but viewers on Spotlight on Success. And I Hopefully. wish you continued success. Thank you so much. Lessons, and I pray God give you all the desires of your heart. Thank you. And Thank good you. luck with Spotlight. Thank you. All right. Thank you.